guys, I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and Windows Phone 7, the newcomer to the mobile OS market, is already making waves on several carriers, AT&T being one of those. The LG Quantum with AT&T, available now at AT&T for $200 and it's a pretty cool device and it's the only one, at the moment at least, until the Dell Venue Pro comes out, to have a full QWERTY keyboard. So, is a QWERTY keyboard worth it? Are the specs great? Is it a cool device? We'll find out in the review, but first special thanks to our friends at Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with two of these. You know, Best Buy Mobile, you don't have to worry about rebates, so you walk in, you get this device for the after rebate price. That's pretty cool, and it's nice to not have to deal with messy paperwork in the holiday season. Enough of that, let's get into the review. Is this the Windows Phone 7 device to have on AT&T, or is it the surround, or the focus? We'll find out, starting right now. Okay, here it is, another Windows Phone 7 device on AT&T. It's the LG Quantum, and it's available now for $199.99 after a $100 mail-in rebate. Now, it joins two other Windows Phone 7 devices on AT&T, the HTC Surround and the Samsung Focus, both, are which, both of which are $199.99. So you may be asking yourself, which one should I get? If all three devices are at $200 after rebates at AT&T, which one's the one for me? Hopefully this review will help you figure that out. Let's go into the specs a little bit on this device. One gigahertz processor, 3.5 inch display, five megapixel camera, and the sticker is still on there. So a little bit of unboxing goodness in the review. Woo. So uh, that's, that's on there as well. But anyway, 5 megapixel camera with a flash, but the real winner here is the physical QWERTY keyboard on this device. As of now, it's the only Windows Phone 7 device to have a physical QWERTY keyboard. The uh, Dell Venue Pro is coming to T-Mobile in the coming in the next few days, and it'll have a physical QWERTY keyboard. So it doesn't have that title for too long, but as of right now, it is. Uh, recap a little bit on the hardware. Volume rocker on the right side, camera shortcut button on the right side, micro USB charging port, as I said, camera on the back, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and power button on the top. So display-wise, you know, you look at a device like the Surround and, uh, and like the uh, Focus, you know, with a 3.8 inch display and a 4 inch display, respectively. Thinking 3.5, this is a little bit small, but actually it's pretty functional, uh, and I've been pretty impressed with it. And uh, special thanks to our friends at LG for hooking us up with the review unit. You know, You've seen Windows Phone 7 several times if you watch my videos, the HD7, the Surround, any of the, uh, the other Windows Phone 7 devices, the HD7, that, uh, that we've covered. So, you know, it's pretty similar, but let's just jump right in to the applications. Typical AT&T applications pre-installed out of the box. AT&T Family Map, AT&T My Wireless, Navigator Radio, UVerse Mobile, Xbox Live, of course, is pre-installed, Zune, Microsoft Office, and then LG's Play 2, which allows you, just as it sounds, to play media to, uh, to another device. So you have pictures, music, videos, and help. Other than that, that's really the only LG-centered program on this device out of the box. So you don't get a lot of bloatware or a lot of um, other programs that may come with other devices on the market, like, not to say it's bloatware, but like uh, Netflix, like uh, T-Mobile TV, those type of things. There are very few uh, LG-installed things outside of Play 2 and, of course, the, uh, the typical AT&T stuff. Uh, user interface-wise, typical Windows Phone 7 here with uh, one frustration that I've had with the device uh, is the signal strength indicator, the battery life indicator. It'll stay on the screen. You know, you'll see I just pulled it down to show it and in a few seconds it'll pop back up into the screen, see? So there's no way to, uh, to show that out of the box. But let's take a look at that physical QWERTY keyboard then the virtual one as well. I had a conversation I was doing on one of the, uh, the demo phones earlier and you can see it's a typical Windows Phone 7 on-screen QWERTY. Uh, you know, that said, it's 3.5 inch display so it is a little bit smaller, and it uh, took me a, you know, a few more days to get used to, but it's surprisingly functional. No problems whatsoever with typing. Hey there, how are you doing? Pretty responsive. Autocorrect is very good. And uh, you know, if, you, if you go back, let's say you know, there wasn't what I meant to so say. You can tap on the word. You can say through instead of how. Joe, get. You get the idea. Get through Joe 8 you doing. And uh, on screen, as you would expect, pretty good. Portrait and landscape mode on that as well. Now the real winner here is the uh, the physical QWERTY keyboard, and you know in testing it's four row QWERTY keyboard, and I've been pretty impressed. The only thing that threw me on the uh, on the hard QWERTY were the buttons over here, one, two, capitalize, and then the function key. Uh, it was a little frustrating to see those on the side, and they're small buttons. I don't know if this is uh, going to show it off really well on the camera, but you can see they're small buttons, and they're kind of hard. They're recessed down in the plastic, so they're hard. To press, so you know, as a fast typer like myself, hey there, let's say how, and then capitalize A. It requires uh, it requires you kind of sidetrack from your your keyboard work. It would have been much better if the, if that key was here, so you know, hey, bam, type like that. It would have uh, I would have been pleased 
if those were over here. So minor frustration, you know, minor challenge there, and it may not be something that bothers you, but I noticed in you know extended use of the keyboard when I was typing an email or something of that nature and wanted to capitalize a word, you know, it's type, 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 jump over here, press, type, 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 you get the idea. But uh, other than that, you know, the keys are very tactile, they're large, and they're island keys, so there's some space in between those. You have a dedicated emoticon key too, so you can send those smiley faces to, uh, to all of your friends. Now the one difference on the front you see is uh, you know, the typical Windows buttons here, but you have capacitive back, capacitive search, then you have a physical home button, so a pretty interesting uh, little design thing on the, uh, on the Quantum that you don't see on the other Windows Phone 7 devices. Other applications are pretty similar, so you see the phone tab, call history pops up by default, you can check the voicemail from this, or you can uh, jump into the dialer, make a phone call, that way. So. You're getting very responsive, and even though it's a 3.5-inch display, I actually didn't notice a huge difference between this, the surround, the focus, or the uh, or the HD 70. I thought it was going to be kind of a burden to use a 3.5-inch display uh, when I, after I've been using four and 4.3 inches, but uh, but but I've been relatively pleased, and you know the keyboard's responsive, no issues on that front. So let's take a look at the uh, at Google Mail or Gmail, for example, with my uh, with my test account. You know, and if you've seen Windows Phone 7. The operating system is largely similar across the board. It's the minor hardware differences that really uh, that really make or break the experience. But that said, you know, transition effects, as with uh, all of the Windows Phone 7 devices, have been incredibly smooth. The transition effects are good. The uh, the large font works surprisingly well. I know when I saw this, uh, you know, with at CES earlier in the year, CTIA earlier in the year, things of that nature. You know, I thought I was the large font. You know, I was like, ah, I'm not really sold on this, but uh, it works surprisingly well. It's very fluid, very easy to use. You know, the font looks good in email. You can see in you know, a large font, and you can scroll, and uh, the scroll is very fluid, no lag whatsoever. Now, the trade-off is you don't get multitasking in Windows Phone 7. So, if that's something you need, I would recommend looking into you know Android, iOS, BlackBerry, something of that nature. But you see the icons at the bottom, and there's the occasional time where you look at an icon, you're like, I don't know what that means. Even though the icons are there, you can click the little three dots over here, and you can see when it, the menu expands. There's small text underneath where you can see respond, delete, newer, or older in this case. And then you get your additional settings within the email. So let's go back, for example, you know, you look here and you say, you know, that's odd check boxes with, uh, with some weird text. I don't know what that means. Scroll up and you see that it means select. And then it gives you an idea of what the other ones are. But surprisingly fluid, surprisingly simplistic. Let's jump into settings. You, know, you have some customization options with Windows Phone 7, but as a version 1 OS, there's not a lot in comparison to something like Android where you can customize, you know, you can you can make specialized widgets, you can put widgets on the desktop. None of that exists in Windows Phone 7, at least as of yet. So uh, let's go to theme, for example, and you can change the dark background to light, for example, change the accent color, which the accent color are the, uh, for the boxes on the display. So let's change it to teal, for example. And uh, when we go back to the home screen, you can see that the teal is an effect and then the light background is in effect as well. Now one frustration I have with Windows Phone 7, at least in its version 1 form, as you can see the calendar uh, widget here, for example, is a, uh, is a rectangular widget or rectangular box, whereas AT&T, the phone, for example, or the messaging, they're square boxes. And you know, there's no way to change that as of yet. It's all based in the system. So when you put the calendar widget, or calendar box, rather, on the home screen, you know, it's rectangular, whereas when you put the messaging one, it's square. Now, you know, when your calendar appointments pop up or when you put in calendar appointments in your calendar, they'll pop up here depending on how close they are to actually happening. I can see use for that in People. I can see use for that in Google Mail, you know, a rectangular Google Mail one, for example, that shows your uh, most recent three emails or a messaging that shows your most three recent or your three recent text messages. Unfortunately, there's no way to change that just yet. That's something I hope to see in future, uh, in future updates to Windows Phone 7. Otherwise, back into settings, you can change the ringtones and sounds. And again, you know, very simplistic when it comes to the interface, Wi-Fi, airplane mode, things of that nature. Now, get into your email and accounts. Google, you can see, is already set up. And when you add an account, you can add Windows Live, Outlook, Google, Facebook, other accounts. You know, if you have the Pop and IMAP configurations uh, on the top of your head, you can configure those. And advanced setup as well. Otherwise, you know, you can go into applications and you can configure phone, for example, you can uh, see the phone number, the voicemail number, and uh, things like SIM security. But it's uh, all in all, it's very simplistic, very easy to use, and uh, you know, it's a love-hate thing. If you like configuring, this isn't the device for you, but if you want a good device uh, and a pretty, pretty surprisingly decent mobile OS, again, for version 1, 
it's uh, something to consider. The camera is 5 megapixels on this device, and uh, you know, like the other Windows Phone 7 devices, it's a decent camera. It does have a flash uh, on the back as well, but it's a pretty decent camera. But I do like the interface of, uh, of Windows Phone 7, the camera app on Windows Phone 7. So we'll put the Verizon 4G LTE modem here for a sample picture. And there is a camera shortcut button on the right side, so half press to focus. So we'll focus in on the Verizon logo, for example. Half press to focus, full press to take the picture, and we'll snap it. So it's black on black uh, in, the, in the example here, black modem and uh, black background, but you can see pretty clear picture like the rest of the devices. The only camera I've, re I've been really disappointed with on the Windows Phone 7 front is the, uh, the HD7. Great device all around, but the, uh, the camera was pretty disappointing. This one's good. Uh, in well-lit situations, you have a ton of light shining down on this. Well-lit situations, it's pretty decent. The flash is, uh, isn't bad, but when you're in low-lit situations, you'll experience some blurring and things of that nature. Now, you can see how easy it is to switch back and forth between the active camera and the gallery. You can take whatever pictures you want. I'll take a picture of the keyboard I have over here. And you can scroll right back through. Pretty easy on that front. You can change uh, to video mode over here, and then you can go into the settings. The LG settings. And actually, you know, there's some LG custom settings in here. Intelligent shot, beauty shot, the resolution, brightness, white balance. See a little bit of a customization, a little bit of LG customization, which is cool because, you know, typically Windows Phone 7 has some pretty strict requirements, or Microsoft, rather, has some pretty strict requirements for Windows Phone 7, so it's nice to see some LG customizations on that front. Of course, the ability to turn the flash on and off and uh, some other settings. Let's take a look at the browser. And you know, I've been, if you watch my other videos, I've been so impressed with the browser performance. Granted, there's no flash uh, on these devices yet, but we can see Phone Dog, for example. And uh, I've been impressed with how quickly it loads. And again, even though there's no flash, the pinch to zoom is just phenomenal on Windows Phone 7. So Phone Dog's coming up right now. And you can see, I mean, just incredibly smooth pinch to zoom, very fast. You know, for me, it's a personal thing. You may like flash, but for me, I trade flash any day for the consistently fast performance. Of the, uh, of the Windows Phone 7 browser. So double tap to zoom in. You can see quick transitions and easy to, uh, easy to zoom back out. Now at the bottom you have the ability to add favorites. You can open new tabs and then of course the typical browser settings. So we can open a new tab. You can see it pops up there. And we'll open up, you know, I open the same browser tabs every single time in these videos. But let's mix it up a little bit. Let's go to, uh, let's go to, doo -doo 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 -doo. let's go to Twitter for example. And when I'm loading Twitter, let's say I want to go back to Phone Dog, I click and you can see the two in the bottom right hand corner. Click on that, bring back Phone Dog back, and bam, there I am. Transition effects in the browser, again, very good. No lag whatsoever there for the most part. But again, that pinch to zoom is just fantastic, and so is the, uh, the pointing or the tap to, uh, tap to zoom in. Very good on both fronts. <laughs>